Now that we've had a chance to learn the interface of Compressor 4, which is very similar to the interface of Compressor 3, there is this really cool feature that I want to show you. Go down to the history window and twirl down where it says today. This is a job that we just compressed. If you twirl it down, there's this new magnifying glass icon right down there. When you click it, it automatically highlights the file you just compressed. Now, this is really cool in case you're one of these people that just can't remember where they stored their files. Well, Compressor 4 can find it for you. Just simply twirl down and click the magnifying glass. This idea of being able to lose a file just sort of boggles my imagination. I don't want to lose files. I want to have a compressor put them where I can find them time after time after time. So let me show you how to create a custom destination. Remember I mentioned in the settings window, there's the settings, the destination tabs. If you go to the destination tab, there are four destinations that Apple ships with the software. Cluster storage, which is used for distributed processing, the desktop, the source, which is the same location as your source file, and the movies folder inside your home directory. These are all wonderful locations, and I'm sure their mothers love them, but they don't do me any good at all. Instead, I want to show you something different. If I move this preview window out of the way, I've got a second drive here, and on that second drive, I'm going to create a folder called Compressed Files. There's that Compressed Files folder. I want to take that Compressed Files folder and make it a custom destination. To do that, click on the Destinations tab. We'll just twirl up Apple. The destinations that I want to create are inside the Custom folder. Click the plus key to create a new custom destination. Local means it's going to be stored on your hard disk. Remote means it's going to be an FTP site, so the compressor will automatically send your files to whatever website you care to specify. In this case, I just want to make something local, so I'll select local. I'll go to my third drive, select the compressed files folder, and click open. Now, I've got two compressed files folders that I could use. One which is stored on my second drive, and when that's full, I could store it to the third drive. I'm going to um, make this compressed files folder a default. So I'm going to select this and go up to Compressor, go down to Preferences, and inside Preferences, notice how I've got a default destination. Now, whenever I load in a new job, it's going to automatically assign that default destination to that folder, so I never have to worry about where my files are stored. Every compressed file that I create is all going to be stored in the same location inside that compressed files folder. Well, now it gets really exciting, because you see, once we have that done, we can now automate the whole process of compression, and that's what I want to show you next.